Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. This is the last session. Yes. Yes. That's something good, I guess. So we are going to end this um, course with two topics that are very easy to understand. One of these is something that you have learn before we are going to make a review and then we are going to um see some vocabulary so we are going to end the course with the vocabulary so give me a second to find the vocabulary which we were working at this last week So give me a second. Okay, yesterday we were ending the topic of the, um, the conditional sentences. And now we are going to, let's see, I will share my screen. We are going to see a topic that is very basic. It's one of the um, most basic topics that we were uh, learning uh, before because this is um, when we are learning English, um, we learn this uh, topic. This is one of the, 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 the first. We are going to talk about the ING form. In this case, we are going to talk about the, um, the gerund. We are going to talk about the gerund. So we are going to make a review of the topic of the gerunds. So let's see, we are going to start. Let me do this bigger. Okay, now. Topic. Jaron. Now, we know um, some things about this topic because this topic uh, we were developing um, before and all, um, in this case, you have more information about uh, this uh, structure because this is a structure. But now we are going to have a review of this topic, not something very long. We are just going to remember some things about this topic uh, we are going to see some examples and all of that. So in this case, we have first the formula for this uh, structure. And we have the subject plus the verb plus the verb plus ing plus the complement. And we have the example. I enjoy dancing. That's the example. I enjoy dancing. That in Spanish, it's um, the meaning is disfruto bailar. In this case, we have our verb. Then we have a verb with the ing form to create this gerund sentence. Then it says this pattern is usually followed by verbs of linking and disliking such as, and we have 
that we are going to use this kind of verbs that it uh, talk about something that we like, something that we dislike, but also we can use another kind of uh, verbs. So we have this. So we have here the examples. We have enjoy. Then we have hate. We have detest. And we have dislike. So in this case, we are going to use this gerund form or this ing form with this kind of verb that are talking about something that we like or in some cases, some things that we don't like or we are not uh, comfortable with them. So we have also another verb. So we have another uh, examples of verbs that we can use with this structure. And we have admit, consider, deny, imagine, remember, suggest, start, stop, Boy, begin, finish, keep, miss, practice, and risk. So in this case, we also use this kind of verbs with the gerund, and we have Admit that in Spanish is admitir, consider that in Spanish is considerar, deny in Spanish is negar, imagine, imaginar, remember, recordar, suggest, sugerir, start, iniciar, comenzar, stop, detener o parar, avoid es evitar, Begin, empezar, finish, terminar, keep, mantener o seguir, miss, olvidar. In this case, it is not like the, the feeling of missing someone. In this case, it's, um, forget that we are going to do something. En este caso, olvidar que teníamos que hacer algo, que perdimos esa oportunidad de hacerlo. Practice, practicar, and then risk que significa arriesgarse o arriesgar. So in those cases, we have this kind of verbs that we can use with this structure or with this, um, um, with this structure or this kind of a sentence or words or verbs that we are going to use to express something. So we have some examples. And we have number one. And it says, Luisa starts dancing when she hears music. Dancing when she hears music. So we have here our verb that is in present, simple, or in this case, an infinitive, and we have the verb with ing. Luisa starts dancing when she hears music. Luisa comienza a bailar cuando escucha música. Then we have another one, and it says, I miss talking with you. In this case, it is talking about the feeling.
and me is talking with you. So in this case, we are going to remember that the gerunds look the same as a present participle, but it is useful to understand the difference between the two. The gerun always uh, has the same function as a noun. Also, it looks like a verb. So in this case, the um, gerun verbs that we are using are not the main verb. They are not like that. They are always a noun. So in this case, obviously we are using a verb as a base, but they are not a, a verb. In this case, they are a noun. So that's the difference that we can say that when we are using the gerund, because in this case, we are not using it as the main action that a person is doing. So in this case, it is a noun about the thing that the people is doing. So the gerund as the subject of the sentence, we have this part. We have the gerund as the subject of the sentence. In this case, we are going to use the gerund or the word with the ing at the end as the subject of the sentence. In this case, the person that is doing the action. So we have some examples. And we have here the first one. Eating people is run. Obviously it's wrong. Then we have another one, hunting tigers is dangerous. Flying makes me nervous. Russian Your third is important. Then we have another one. Smoking. Smoking causes lung cancer. So with this part that we are using the gerund as the uh, subject of the sentence, we can say that um, the subject is the first thing that we have here. We are going to mark this word we have in the beginning of the sentence because it is functioning as the subject of this uh, sentence or this structure. So in this case, it is like, um, that is the, the thing that we're uh, telling about the, the, the sentence. So in that case, eating people is wrong. Comer personas está mal. Comer, in that case, it is not talking about the action, just the action to eat. In that case, it's eating people. Comer personas, that is the subject or our uh, sentence. So in that case, it is functioning as the, uh, the subject because that is the thing that we are talking about. That is not the action that the person is doing. So in this case, Eating people is the subject. Hunting tigers, it's also the subject because we are talking about the hunting that is dangerous. So in that case, it's also the subject. Flying makes me nervous. Obviously I am talking about a, an action, but in this case, flying is my subject because I am talking about the 
flying thing that makes me feel very nervous. So in that cases, we have that in these um, sentences, we have also the ing form of these words that can function as subjects. Then we have the gerund as the complement of the verb to be. We have some examples. One of his, daddy, his duties is attending meetings. So in this case, it, this is um, the most common way in which we um, use this kind of uh, words because we use it with the, uh, with the verb to be. That is the most common because we are going to use like that. So here we have the verb to be and then we have the um, gerund form of the word. One of his duties is attending meetings. Then we have another one. The hardest thing about learning English is understanding the German. So in this case, if you can see in this example, we have another word with ing, that is learning. But in this case, we are not focusing on that word. We are focusing in the word that is uh, next to the verb to be, that is understanding, because it is the complement of the verb to be. Then we have another one. And it says, one of life's pleasures is having breakfast in bed. I think it is. So we have here the verb to be and the ing form. So one of life's pleasure is having breakfast in bed. This is one of the most common thing um, in which we are going to use the, the ING because we are using the verb to be, and then we use the word with the ING form. So this uh, gerund as complement of the verb to be, I think it is one of the most used things that we can have in English because, um, we can create a lot of words using the verb to be and the, uh, the, the word in ing because it is also um, referring to a, a time or we can use it for the, the future in some cases or some action that are happening in the, in the present that can be um, in the future also. So we have another one, the gerund after prepositions. The gerund after preposition, and it says, the gerund must be used when a verb comes after a preposition. This is also through as of certain expressions ending in a preposition. For example, the expression despite, and there is no point in. So it says that in a general form, um, Next to the to the preposition, maybe um, the verb needs to be in gerund. Así que se dice, verdad, que después de una preposición, después de que escribamos una preposición, siempre tiene que ir una palabra escrita en gerundio. So we have some examples.
And we have, can, can you sneeze without opening your mouth? So we have the preposition here and we have the uh, ing or the geron next to the preposition. Then she is good at painting. We have here the uh, preposition with uh, the geron. We have another one. She avoid him by walking on the opposite side of the road. So we have, she avoid him by walking on the opposite side of the road. We have by, that is the preposition, and we have um, walking, that is the German. Now, we arrive in Madrid after driving all night. After driving. My father decided against postponing his trip to Hungary. Then we have another one. There is no point in waiting. And the last one of these examples is, despite missing the rain, the train, I mean, we arrive on time. So remember that we have a lot of uh, prepositions. And um, then after that preposition, we are going to write a word that is in German that has the ing form. So we have uh, some examples of the preposition. We have about, 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 according to, across, after, against, ago, ahead of, along, and we have apart, around, as, as far as, as well as, aside. Also, we have at, because of, before, behind, below, beneath, beside, between, beyond, but, by, by mean of, close to, despite, down, or from, and a lot of more words that uh, can function as prepositions. So now, we have another uh, thing about this gerund, that is the gerund after phrasal verbs. That is another topic that we were uh, developing in this course, the gerund after phrasal verbs.
So phrasal verbs are composed of a verb plus a preposition or adverb. So it is the, uh, the phrasal verbs are composed with a verb plus a preposition or a verb plus an adverb. So we are going to write some examples. And we have, when will you give up smoking? When will you give up smoking? And we have here, give up smoking. Give up is the phrasal verb. Smoking is the gerund. Then she always puts off going to the dentist. So we have it's off, that is the phrasal verb in going, that is the uh, gerund. Then we have another one. He kept on asking for money. Jim end up buying a new TV after his old one is broke. Oh, what's broke? So we have that with the phrasal verb, we also uh, can use this uh, gerund after that. So we are going to, uh, to write first the phrasal verb, then we are going to write the, uh, the gerund. And it said that there are some phrasal verbs that include the word to. So we are going to have like this because it is important to remember this part. Some phrasal verbs, includes the word to. So there are some uh, phrasal verbs that have this word to as a preposition. For example, to look forward to, to take to. So we have this kind of uh, words that we are going to say something about this. So in this case, this uh, phrasal verb include this word to as a preposition. And we have these examples. So in this case, it is important to recognize that the word to is a preposition in these cases because it must be followed by a gerund. It is not part of the infinitive form of the verb and you, and you can check whether to is a preposition or a part of the infinitive. If you can put the pronoun it after the word to 
and form a meaningful sentence. Then the word to is a preposition and must be followed by a gerund. En este caso, estamos diciendo que hay muchos de estos phrasal verbs que tienen esta eh, palabra to que sirve como una preposición. Eh, sabemos que el infinitivo o muchos de los infinitivos también tienen esa, eh, esa palabra, ¿verdad? Pero debemos diferenciarlos sabiendo que si podemos poner el pronombre it después de lo que es la palabra to y sacamos una oración que tenga significado, entonces es parte de lo que es el, um, el infinitive. Pero si es parte del de phrasal verb, siempre tiene que ir seguido por el gerund. Siempre tiene que ir seguido por esta eh, palabra con ing. Then we have some examples. And we have here, I look forward to hearing from you soon. So we have here, forward to. Hearing. And we have, I look forward to it. So in this case, in the first one, we have that this is like uh, the phrasal verb with the uh, gerund. In the second one, we have that is the part of the infinitive um, sentence. So we have two different kind of words or sentence that we can uh, differentiate about the use of the preposition to or the part of the infinitive. Then we have another one. I am used to waiting for buses. So we have here used to waiting that's the expression that we are seeing. Then we have another one, I am used to eat. So in, this, in the third one, it says, I am used to waiting for buses. Estoy acostumbrado a esperar los buses. And then number four, estoy acostumbrado. Just like that, estoy acostumbrado. So in that case, we can differentiate the infinitive or the uh, phrasal verb with the ing form. Then we have another one. She didn't really take to study English. She didn't really take to it. Then we have another one. When will you get around to moving the grass?
So we have these two kind of sentence in which we use the two as a preposition or a part of the phrase over with the a word in gerund. Then we have the gerund in compound nouns. So it says, in compound nouns used in the gerund, the meaning is that of a noun, not a continuous verb. For example, with the word swimming pool, it is a pool for a swimming. It is not a pool that is a swimming. This is like um, the thing that we were saying at the beginning. We are not going to use this kind of words at verbs uh, because there are not like the the action that is performing someone so and in this case in the compound um nouns we are going to use this to talk about the noun in el ejemplo tenemos the um, swimming pool si nosotros lo tradujéramos literal estaríamos diciendo de que la piscina está nadando no because it's swimming it's doing an action but in this case it is talking about the, the thing, the pool is a place in which we can swim. So that is the um, structure or the meaning of that, uh, that we can say it like a phrase because it is like a phrase. So in that case, we are talking about that the pool is a place in which we can swim, not that the pool is swimming or doing the action. So we have the examples. And it says in the number one, I am giving Sally a driving lesson. So in this case, in this example, we are talking about um, that Sally is going to learn how to drive, not that the lesson is driving, right? In this case, it's talking about that she is going to learn how to drive. Then we have, they have a swimming pool in the backyard. And then we have, I bought some new running shoes. So these are examples of compound nouns. There are names or nouns in this case that is um, that has another part. Estos eh, nombres compuestos, we can say nombres compuestos son aquellos que llevan, ¿verdad? Um, ese nombre con el gerund. And in this case, it's talking about that, um, that thing and not the action that is performing. Then we have the gerund after some expressions. And it says the gerund is necessary after the expression can help, can stand to be worth or it is not used. And we have some examples of these expressions.
She couldn't help falling in love with him. I can stand being stuck in traffic jams. It's not use trying to escape. Then we have, it might be worth phoning the station to check the time of the train. So we have here in which cases we are going to use the uh, gerund form of these words. And also we have something else about this one. Because in this case, we are just uh, creating sentences in some of these cases. But also we can use this uh, gerund form for short responses. In that case, we have some short responses. And we are going to write some um, like examples about the short responses with the ing form. And we have affirmative statements with gerunds, the, um, the part in which we agree with that affirmative statement or in the part in the I mean, or in the part in which we disagree. We have two kind of re the responses. In one is when we agree with that statement and the other one is when we disagree with that statement. So in, in este caso, con las short responses, vamos a tener dos partes. Una en la que vamos a estar de acuerdo con la oración que se nos está dando o con el statement que se nos está dando y una en la que vamos a estar en contra o no vamos a estar de acuerdo con ese statement que se nos está brindando. So we have here affirmative statements with gerund. Then we have agree. Then we have disagree. And we have here the examples of these statements. I like driving. Then we have, I hate working on weekends. And then we have, I'm good at using computers. So we are going to have this a short answer or short response to this a, a, a sentence. For the first one, I like driving. If I am agree with that statement, I will say, so do I. Or if I am disagree with that statement, oh, I don't. Well, well in this case, the oh, it's just something that we can add to the expression because 
it is not like necessary to say, oh, I don't. Or also we can say, really, I don't, because it adds something else to the expression. It is not like, I don't, like very, very, I mean, dry or something like that. So with the second one, I hate working on weekends. So do I. I am agree with that uh, statement, right? So I need to move this like that. Or if we uh, disagree with that statement, really, I like it. And the uh, next one, I'm good at using computers. We can say, so I am, so am I, so am I. Or if we disagree with that statement, we can say, I am not. But also we can use another um, word at the beginning. In this case, mm, I'm not, really? I'm not, let me think, I'm not. We can, we can add some expressions at the beginning of the sentence, then we can say this short response about the statements that someone is saying. So then we have the, the second part in this case, we have the negative statement with the gerunds, because in this case is the positive one, and now we have the negative one. We're going to print like this, negative statements. And we have here negative statement with gerund. Agree and disagree. So we have the examples. I don't mind working evenings. I don't mind working evenings. Then we have another one. I'm not good at writing reports. And the next one, I can stand making mistakes. So if we are agree with the first one, I don't mind working evenings, we are going to say, in this case, we're going to have um, this in mind. For the positive connotation of the sentences, like in the first uh, examples that we had, that in that case it is positive connotation, we are going to use this kind of response, so do I or so I am. But in this case, uh, we, when we have this negative connotation, we are going to use neither, the word neither, ni yo, in, this, in, the, in that case, right? Neither do I. Neither am I. And the last one, and neither can I. And in this case, if you can see, when you are using these uh, sentences, we are using that auxiliary that the statement has. In the first one, it says, I don't mind. I don't, we have do, and in the response we have neither do I. In that case, the response is using the auxiliary. And the second one, it says, I'm not good at writing. It's using the verb to be. And in the response we have neither am I. 
it's also using the verb to be to respond. And in the last one, neither can I. And in the um, statement it has, I can stand making mistakes. So in that case, it's also using the auxiliary that we have in the statement. So in the disagree, we have, well, who I? Next one, I am. And in the last one, oh, I don't mind. It's like, I don't care, really. So in the first one, I don't mind working evenings. It's like saying, um, no me preocupa, no me importa, no me interesa. Not like that rude, but in that, in that case, like, no me molesta trabajar las tardes. Then we have, I'm not good at writing reports. No soy muy bueno, no soy bueno escribiendo reportes. But in the disagree, it's I am. Because I am like, um, like I am good at that. And I'm going to say that I am really good doing that. And that's some contrary things. And in the last one, I can stand making mistakes. No puedo soportar eh, cometer errores o hacer errores. Oh, I don't mind. No me interesa, no me importa. Like, mistakes are something very common. That's many people think like that. So that's okay. So. We have a special verbs. Uh, or verbs followed by a gerund. And we are going to write some examples just to end this part of the topic. We are going to have some um, examples like, um, like we can apply in the, in the daily life. So it says that uh, after a verb, we can use a, 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 a subject. In this case, we are going to use some kind of things or we can use another verb but in this case if we can use another verb after the main verb we are going to use it like in the gerund form so we are going to create some examples using a verb plus a ing verb or word after that main uh, verb Followed by Jaron. We're going to write it like this. So we have number one, love. And we have the example. And it says, Tom loves emailing her cousin in Paris. Loves, that is the, the verb, emailing. That is the Jaren. We are going to have this one in red. And we are going to have this one in blue. Like this. Thumbs loves emailing her cousin in Paris. In Paris. Okay, we have the first one. Then we have another one and it's a light. And the example, they don't like eating octopus. They don't like this one that is the verb like it's in red and eating that is the gerund is in blue. We have another one, hate. And we have the example. I hate being in an Aussie restaurant.
So now we have these kind of examples in which we can see how we can apply this German form. And we have some, um, we're not going to say um, like rules, but we can um, use that uh, structure in some cases. It's also said that in this case, we are going to use it as a noun. Also, we can use this um, German form like a subject of the sentence. And we can play with these kind of structures to create or to improve the way in which we communicate. We also can make mm, like more funnier the way in which we talk and easier to understand the message that we are going to transmit to the other uh, people that we are talking with. So in this case, we are going to end this session and this course with this uh, structure that is the gerund. This is a topic that we were developing um, before. Also, it's a topic that maybe you have some information about. This is a very common uh, topic that we develop in the English uh, learning process. And I just want to say, Thank you very much for your time. It was a really, really good time uh, giving you information, uh, giving you some advices of things that you can uh, use in your process because this is not the end. You are going to continue with this process. And also after that you end all the courses that you are taking, you are going to continue with this process. So. You are a very, very good group and be like this all the time because you are very, very receptive and you are learning a lot of things. So um, thank you for your time. I think I, I know that it's very hard to uh, come home from work and have this kind of things because we are very tired or something like that. Uh, but that's very good. That's very um, amazing that you are like this. So it was a pleasure to be here with you. And if you had some uh, troubles with the platform, you have just some more hours to end the exercises to get your certification for this course. So remember that you have to end all the, um, the exercise in the platform. So I just want to say thank you and have a really good time. Uh, don't um, no thanks to you keep learning that is very very uh, fun to keep learning something new every day so thank you for your time and have a really good night and I guess this is the end good night teacher good night have a really good time good night teacher Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks to Thank you. you. Nice good to night. meet you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.